Good afternoon. Saints of God, we prepare to proceed into the house of the Lord, and we call things to order as we ask for your prayers for the family, prayer for the Lord to bless everything that is said, everything that is done, as we proceed into the house of the Lord to celebrate the life of Brother Tommy Manning in the name of Jesus. Help us now as we proceed in. We read into our hearing these words. I am the resurrection and the life. We all please stand if you're able to. Those that are able to stand, please. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever believeth in me shall never die. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are strangers before thee, as our fathers are days upon the earth, are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. Lord, make me to know mine ends and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. For I know that thou would bring me to death and to a home appointed for all living. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Help us, Jesus. Congregation, you may sit. Thank you so much. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That you sorrow not. Even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which is which shall be revealed in us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We take this time to welcome all of us, the family of Uncle Sonny, all of the friends that have come from near and far. But we have what I consider a hall of fame of friends and loved ones. And there are so many that Uncle Sonny knew and went to school and the college with around here in the city of Picayune. And from near and far, and I want, I do not want to overlook anybody, but please, let's do our best uh, to uh, be, I'll say it this way, have, have something to say, don't just, don't just be saying something, amen, so I don't know who coming first, uh, amen, so uh, anybody want to come up and say something, God bless you.
Good afternoon. Giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. I would like to thank the pastor of this wonderful church, the family, for giving me this opportunity uh, to say a few things about a wonderful man, a great man. He's my teammate at Jackson State. We played together. And uh, we, might only, we wasn't only teammates. We was a band of brothers. You know, we met up. It was always a handshake. It was always a big hug. And uh, I bring greeting from his teammates. This is his former teammates. All of us stay in Jackson. We get together once a month, have breakfast and fellowship. But they send their greeting and condolences to the family. And I would like to read this. Uh, uh, Brother Breland going to have some old pictures made like this for the family. Uh, I'd like to read this, read this resolution or tribute to my dear friend. Whether it has been the will of Almighty God to remove from us, Mr. Tommy Manning, who has been a valuable member of our community, who listened without being judgmental and saw to the needs of others, whether they were family or not. Whether he always appeared to have a pleasant disposition and attitude toward those around him, he would surely be missed by those who loved and met him. The words of this poet best express what have made, might have been his last will and testament to those he loved. A time will come when my life should cease. But when that time does come, I ask that you remember these things. Bury my body. Don't bury my beliefs. Bury my heart. Don't bury my love. Bury my eyes. Don't bury my vision. Bury my feet but not the past of my life. Bury my hands, don't bury my work. Bury my shoulders, but not the concern I carry. Bury my voice, don't bury my message. Bury my mind, don't bury my dreams. Bury me, don't bury my life. If you must bury something, let it be my fault and my weaknesses, but let my life continue in you. God bless your family. No. Uh, my name is uh, Hugh Taylor. Tom Cabot, one of my best friends. We used to live in Jackson, Mississippi. I remember when Dustin and Tammy was just small children. You know, we came a long ways. He taught me a lot. The first thing he taught me to was to uh, there was no greater love than a friend that laid your life down for you. You always talk about right. He says, because right always wins, and lies always lose. You know, he was one of the nicest guys you ever meet. He always had a smile. He never had no down word to say about you. It was always a hug. He showed love. And uh, I miss him a whole lot. But he, uh, we kind of got separated when he Moved from Jackson, and uh, but I still had him on my mind. I always had him on my mind. And the last few times I talked to him, you know, he was coming down a little bit, but I uh, prayed for him that he gets better. But I don't have to worry now, because he's in a better place. You know, thank you. Truly, truly, it is an honor to stand before the family to talk about Mr. Manning. 
I bring you greetings from Wolf Arts National Bank where we serve Mr. Manning. And Mr. Manning was our beloved customer that everybody loved Mr. Manning. What I have to say about Mr. Manning is that he was a bundle of joy. A bundle of joy. Every time he walked into the bank, he was going to be smiling and he was going to be singing. And guess what? We was going to cut a jig, me and Mr. Manning. And I don't care who was up there serving Mr. Manning. Mr. Manning was going to always make his way back to my desk and say, Angie, I want you to take care of me. And Mr. Manning will always, when we talk, he will talk about his family. Oh, how he loved his family. Angie, Tammy, this, my grandson, this. He talked about all his children. And it was an honor and a privilege to grow with Mr. Manning and hear those things. He was a family to everybody in the branch, whether he was uh, confident someone, one of my employees that just lost their father, or maybe somebody wasn't feeling well, or maybe it was the pregnant girl just needed a bite to eat. Mr. Manning was going to go over the subway and make sure she ate. You know, and I'm grateful for the opportunity that I had with Mr. Manning. I know uh, one plant, one water, but God get the increase. I know me and Mr. Manning had many conversations, but I noticed like a year ago, our conversation changed. He started talking about the Bible, the Bible, going to church, going to uh, singing, different things like that. And one day a customer came in and mentioned it. We was talking and they, uh, I had went somewhere and spoke. And, they, and Mr. Manning said, uh, Angie, what are they talking about? And I said, Mr. Manning, I said, I, uh, I said, I hold a master's in theology. He said, girl, you holding all this wisdom back from me? And I remember one day he said he had had a conversation with some of his friends, and they was talking about the Bible, and he said that he didn't quite understand. So he said, wait, let me call my friend, and he asked him what was the question. He said, can you expound and tell me more about it? And I said, yeah, Mr. Manning. And when I told him that, he was like, girl, you gave me a whole lot of insight. So from that moment on, our conversation went nothing but biblical aspects. So one thing that I do know, it is well. It is well. Of course, we will miss his presence. I know we will miss his presence at the bank, but I know it is well. Thank you, guys. It is my prayer that God continue to strengthen you guys. Excuse me. Uh, this is my pastor, uh, Black Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend John McNeil. Uh, he threw me off. I went to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to say uh, a few things. So I'm not going to hold y'all long. I promise you it's not that long. Uh, so just bear with me. Uh, to what can I say to the man of many jokes? many laughters, many exaggerations to the point you didn't know if he was half crazy or the most interesting man in the world. But to you, I only want to say a few words for today. To the man that I cursed out of my head when I came home from an away game and saw this man in black sleeping in my bed, saying, who is this? I just came from a reading, and now you're taking my only comfort. Uh, I love you. To the person who would show up to my job randomly to either get something or give me something, and to even my students came to know you because you were always called at exactly 11.30 for some odd reason, I'll never know, but I love you. To the individual who would come over to watch a football game and discuss each team's plays, and I always compare them to the picking you of old. I love you. To the father who gave birth to my wonderful mother named Tammy because it was easy to replace that O with an A. I love you. To the grandfather who would call. <laughs> who would call two or three times asking me to make a CD of people I've never heard of before. Uh, I mean, from the R&B, the gospel, country, you wanted everything on those CDs. 
uh, to the point to where you even know who Little Nas X was, and I was like, you don't even have a radio. <laughs> I love you. To the patient who wanted snacks, a Burger King snuck into his room. I wanted someone to stay the extra hour to talk in the hospital room. I love you. Lastly, to the spirit of Tommy, Tomcat Manning, who would light up any room he stepped in. I love you. I cherish you. And this world just won't be the same without you. But granddaddy, you'll always be with me. Thank y'all. Blessed be unto the Lord. Blessed be unto the Lord. I bring you greetings from the Black Chapel Missionary Baptist Church of Jackson, Mississippi, where Dusty and Tammy and Chris and their families are members. And I'm here in support of them. I didn't know Brother Manning personally, but I knew him through his children. And I would just like to say to the Reed family, those of us who are here who are of age know from personal experience that in times like these, the wind of loss can almost blow you down. But thanks be to God's love, his mercy, and his amazing grace that he manifests down upon the bereaved in times like these. By way of family, friends, and well wishes, the bereaved are made able to stand. Because we know that our faith does not teach us that we are not to suffer, and that we are not to sorrow, and that we are not to be burdened down at times. But our faith does teach us that we're not to suffer, we're not to sorrow, and we're not to be burdened down without hope. And our hope lies in that little ray of light, which is known as Jesus, who constantly travels around the rim and ridges of our darkness and despair, who always has within his capacity the ability to break into our every situation and set us free. And upon last week, that light shined down upon Brother Manning's in his sick room, and set him free. And when God set us free, we are free indeed. And now it is left up to the bereaved also to loose him and let him go. Because the master, our God, has need of him. May God continue to bless you and forever keep you as you continue your journey and your process in accepting the will of God. God bless you. shoulder pads and uh, we were tired so we made it up in our mind to just shake hands after the fight over the shoulder pad and I want to say this for my friend that's not here Lap Baker we've been asking about laughing about Tomcat all the week because he can watch Tomcat he, he can go just like Tomcat so all this week we just been laughing. You just can't be here today. But I want y'all to know that Lap Baker can mark Tomcat every word that comes out of his mouth. So if you ever want to hear Tomcat, talk to Lap Baker. <laughs> I got the chance to even talk to my grandma, um, but we'll get to it. 
But uh, I remember first meeting him, and my dad was like, this is your granddad. And from the pictures, he was absolutely nothing like the picture. I thought he was going to be so stern and scary. I don't know. I just didn't expect him to be as bubbly, as jokey, as lovable as he was. And meeting him, it just made so much sense to where my dad got his personality from. And yes, <laughs> because, uh, I mean, I remember the first time me and Chris went over to his house and we sat down. Daddy left us there, and I swear he talked forever. Oh my God, we <laughs> sat there and we listened to so many stories. And we were starving by the time he actually was like, all right, I'll let you guys go get you something. <laughs> um, he was really the best part of the family, and nothing will ever replace that. I love him to death, and it's a piece of everyone that's not here anymore, but always with us forever. <laughs> Tomcat was at a funeral. Tomcat and Percy and my brother were good friends, and, and I had the blessed privilege of being the little fella that could hang around with celebrities. Uh, when I talked to Tomcat, you know, he didn't know my brother had become a homicide victim. It saddened him. You know, he would always call me Little Albo. Now, as great as a player as Tom Cat was, he was a better person. He never met a stranger, and he always treated everybody with respect. And so to this family, you have a tremendous loss to this community, to the church, to everybody. But earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. If Tom Cat could speak today, I think he would look down at us and probably say thank you. Then give us that big laugh that he always could give us, and he's gonna be all right. So family, Percy, Francis, y'all take care. God bless you, the rest of the family. Be lots of good man. Anyone else wants to come and say some words? God bless you. I'm going to allow Pastor Keith Hall to come and give us some brief expression. And after that, we'll have a song and get ready for the word. Bless you. I know you're trying to figure out what the short little white guy's up here for. <laughs> I see it on your face. That's all right. That's all right. I bring you greetings from Mississippi Ministries of the Church of God here in the state of Mississippi. I serve as the overseer for 48 congregations here in Mississippi. I am currently serving the Klein Road Church of God in Gulfport, and one of my members is here, which is why I'm here, and I am so thankful that I am here representing the church and representing our denomination in the state, but most importantly, I'm here as Sister Hazel's pastor, and what a blessing it is to be here. A few months ago, when we came to Gulfport, and I moved down here from Neshoba County, and please do not hold that against me, and started pastoring and helping the church there at Gulfport. 
one of the things that I discovered real quickly was that Sister Hazel was a woman of prayer. In fact, if you've ever been in one of her prayer meetings, and she has one literally every night, Monday through Friday, and one of her prayer requests was right here for her brother every night. So for the past few months, we've been praying together, praying for this dear man, praying for this family that I haven't even met until now. What an honor it is to be able to just be here with you today to pay our respects, to speak kindly to and for one another. But I want to share with you something. I want to share with you a mystery. This is a mystery to some, but not to all of us. For the scripture says we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will raise incorruptible. And we, at that moment, will be changed. Changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And that's going to happen in just a moment. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought past the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Let's ask that question, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? And then the Bible says, thanks be to God, who gives us victory through Jesus Christ the Lord. That's what we have. That's what we celebrate. That's what makes us different than anybody else in this world. We have that victory. Which is why we can gather in a place like this. Which is why we can pay our respects and say our goodbyes with the confidence and the hope that one day we shall be changed. We all shall be changed. Family, we continue to pray for you. And Sister Hazel, I love you, dear. And my prayers continue for you. Amen. Thank you. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb oh i've had some weary days and some sleepless nights but when i i look around I think things over oh, all of my good days they outweigh my bad days and I I won't complain sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road oh, I ask the question Lord why so much pain for he knows what's best for me although my weary eyes they 
they cannot see. Oh, so I'll say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. to me he's, he's been so good to me oh more than you have been so well could ever be he's been good to me he dried all my tears away and it turned my midnight into day. Oh, I'll say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. God's been good to me. good to me oh, more than you were this so well could ever be he's been good he's been good to me he dried my tears away thank you Jesus and you turn my midnight into day oh, I'll say thank you Lord instead of complaining I'll say thank you Lord hey anybody got a reason to say thank you Lord hey I, I won't complain your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Come on, thanks to God. Thank you, Jesus. To the family, children of Uncle Sani, to his brothers and sisters, all of us, nieces, nephews, cousins, all of us, the family my deepest and sincerest prayers to the Lord is for him to encourage us in our time of overwhelming sorrow and grief and can't nobody comfort us like God can I don't have the words but God has to touch just let him touch you he'll make it better to everyone that has been on this program to say words, to express words. I thank God for you. And to the family that worked so hard to make all of this possible. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it lovely? Come on and clap your hands. I salute everyone that played a role in making this day a blessing for Uncle Sonny. To our musician, Brother Hunter to our production professional brother Justin to the pastors ministers friends to everybody I want to tell you thank you as I get to the word pray for me as I pray for you for the Lord to give us a word that will speak and help us very briefly call to your attention from the first book of Peter chapter number four verses eight and nine first Peter chapter number four verses eight and nine and it reads and above all things have fervent love one have fervent love amongst yourselves for love shall cover the multitude of sins 
use hospitality one to another without grudging. And I use for a text today, family and friends, simply these three words. Three words. Love. I love you. Three words. Love has a way of penetrating our frustrations, our pains, our vulnerabilities, our weaknesses, our wrongs, our mistakes. When we love one another, it helps us to look beyond all of our shortcomings. And Peter, the writer of this epistle, wrote this church to the early church in Asia Minor, which is now known as the province in the country of Turkey, to encourage them to grow above our mindset to criticize and to hurt and to do each other wrong. And this message is not to call out anybody. It's just to remind us that love is the answer. Three words. Wrote this passage of scripture saying that love covers a multitude of wrongs. It does not mean that love covers up the things we have done wrong. It goes a little deeper than that, brothers and sisters, family. It allows us to say, I'm not going to stir up no bad stuff about what I know about so-and-so or what I heard about so-and-so. It helps us to take an elevated mindset where rather than causing harm or hurt, we try to love. Three words. One of the most powerful songs that I've ever heard is where I got the message from today. Anybody heard of Stevie Wonder? These three words, plain and simple, these three words talking about how all it takes sometimes for a mother or a father or a brother or a sister or a family member or a friend is just simply say, I love you. And it has a way of comforting the pain or the hurt or the frustration or the disappointment because that's just how love is. And this this message is, is meant for us to look at ourselves from the inside out. I can't say nothing to, her, to help Uncle Sander right now. I can't say nothing to hurt him. Amen. I can't, I, can't, I can't preach him into heaven. We have to live our life. I don't have no crown to give. I don't have no heavenly mansion to give anybody. Amen. You have to do it on your own, your own works. So this is not for that. This message is for allow us to reach beyond whatever partitions that may be in front of us and to say, you know what? I really, really love you. I really don't really, I really don't understand. I might not have to know everything, but you know what? I really, really love you. And these three words, when some of us walk through the doors of the church today, did you tell anybody I love you? When you left your house to come this way this afternoon, did you tell someone, I love you? When you came in here and you saw someone that you might not have seen in a long, long time, or someone that you may even know, did you stop and tell them, I love you? Did we stop and think about, hey, there is a way to reach beyond whatever partition that the devil may be trying to put between us, is to simply say, I love you, and mean it from the bottom of your heart. And Peter also addressed something that happens in families and happens in the body of Christ, where he talks about hospitality. 
you know, hospitality is a ministry. There are those that are gifted in hospitality, just know how to show love and kindness and know how to help and put things together just to show someone how much you care about them. Hospitality. And he said, if you're going to show someone some hospitality, don't do it grudgingly. In other words, if you're going to do something, do it. And don't fuss about it. Amen. No, I fussed. I'm not going to even lie. You know, I, I, be honest. There are some things I fussed about. But when I went to the Lord in prayer, I said, Brian, if you're going to do something, don't complain. And if you're going to do it, do it lovingly. And don't do it grudgingly. No one has to make us show love and kindness. You do it because you love and you care. Amen, somebody. And I would say this about love because this is how God loved us and how he loves us. For the Bible said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this is the kind of love that I'm speaking of today. Agape love. Love that looks beyond our wrongs. Love that looks beyond our shortcomings. Love that looks beyond the things that we have messed up and done wrong in our life. Love has a way of fixing that. Greatest example, one of I can give you, remember when Jesus was hanging on Calvary's cross and there were two hanging on either side and there was one that railed against Jesus, was criticizing and calling him down and there was the other one that was hanging up on the cross next to Jesus and he said, hold up, wait a minute and that's how we can check some stuff sometimes in our life. Someone bringing you some garbage on somebody, hold up. Wait a minute. Don't bring it to me. If he said, this man has done nothing wrong. Talking about Jesus. But he said, now we deserve what we get. But he looked at his life and where he was. And the Bible does not say anything about him ever going to church anywhere does not say anything about him singing in anybody's choir or coming to a prayer meeting, going to a revival tent meeting, being on anybody's role at the church. The Bible didn't make no mention of that. But he had a conversation with Jesus where he asked him. He said, Father, remember me. Not if you go, but when you go into paradise. He said, remember me. And this is how love is. Jesus did not judge this man for whatever he had done. He was hanging up on the cross, being penalized as a criminal. And some of us have done some criminal things. They ain't, just, they may, ain't been to jail for it, but you know, we've done some stuff up in here. Hey, man, I'm talking to, to us. And, and Jesus simply told this man, because of love. He said, this day, you will be with me in paradise. And that's just how love is. So I encourage us today, if we really say we love the Lord, if we really say that we are children of God, it's to love one another. And I will give us to think of it this way, Lord, help me to love in my home. Help me to love on my job. Help me to love in my church. Help me to love in my community. Help me to love somebody today in the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. I need to love. I got to love. Oh, how I love Jesus. And like the songwriter said, I love him because, come on somebody, just because. 
Sometimes we just can't help ourselves. I love you just because Jesus, the songwriter, said because he first loved me. And God is just good like that. He looks beyond our faults. Somebody ought to say amen. And he sees our needs. He knows about our hurts. He knows about our pains. He sees our frustrations. He knows about our weaknesses and vulnerabilities. But because of his love, he reaches down from heaven above. And he knows how to wrap his everlasting arms of love around us. And I'm not the only one in here today. I need the love of God in my life. Ain't God all right? Love has a way of breaking through hardness. Love has a way of breaking through differences. Love has a way of breaking through any obstacle or obstruction that life tries to put in our way. So church, family, friends that are here today, cry your tears unto the Lord. Grieve unto the Lord. He'll make it better. But I want you to know, can't nobody, can't nobody love you. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. He's a holy heel. He's a very present help in time of trouble. He knows how to fix it. He knows how to minister to us. All you got to do is ask him. Lay your hand on me. Lord, I need you to touch me right now. These three words. I love you. To the herons of the women in my life. The heroes of the Manning family in my life. I want to tell you I love you. In the name of Jesus. Come on and clap your hands. Tell the Lord thank you. I want y'all to know I do listen to other music other than rhythm and blues. But honestly, I get most of my messages from secular music. Some of these men and women that sing secular music, they saved just like us. They go through things just like we do. We just have a chance to be blessed by their ministries and their gifts. But I know some of y'all know Tina Turner. She wrote a song years ago. What's love? There you go. Y'all smiling. Come on and smile. It's going to be all right. It's all right. Uncle Sonny in a better place. Amen. All of the exploits of his life has been mentioned today. I can't get up here and tell it all. I'll be talking to Nightfall. I can't say all of those things. But I know we loved him, his children, God bless you, his siblings, God bless you, to all of us, the family, God bless you, pray God's continuous blessings in your life, and remember when you leave up out of here, I love you. I ain't going to make nobody say it, I'm going to ask you to, I love you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to ask if the officials from Brown's funeral home would come. And we're going to follow their direction. Hallelujah. Sister Andre, wait just a minute. I'm sorry. Brother Hunter, we got time. Give us one more song. Sister Andre, please give me one more song. And we're going to prepare to close.
I love to sing His words. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. I'm going to, Sister Andrea, help me with this, Lord. We have, we're going to have a closing prayer. Now, I want to get before myself, but Mont Francis, pastor there, Pastor Barnes. We're going to ask him uh, to give us our closing prayer, but I want to make sure that we are in order. Sister Andre, do we have anything to do before the closing prayer? Okay. Uh, Pastor Barnes, would you please come? God bless you, sir. Amen. We've been looking for you. Give us a closing prayer. Thank you. Amen. May we pray. Gracious Father, we come before your presence first saying thank you. Thank you for this blessed day. Thank you for the life, the legacy, Lord. Brother Tom Cat, Lord, all the precious memories. Lord, be with us now in all that we do. Father, we bless you, we praise you, we lift up your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Amen. 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 Sister Andrea. Saints of God, family, all of us, we read these words into our hearing, bowing in humble submission to the will of our Heavenly Father, who has taken to himself the soul of our deceased brother. We do now therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus who shall come in majesty and power to judge the quick and the dead when corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be made like unto his own glorious body. May we, with all those who have died in the faith, rise with thine eternal glory for thy name's sake. Let us all say amen. amen. Bless you. Family, you can stand. God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much. As we, leave, as we leave the house of God, now I am correct. We are going to uh, meet at Fatty's, right? Sister Yolanda, please. Thank you. 
Okay, there is a room reserved for family and friends at Fatty's here in Picayune. The room is reserved starting at 3. So if you guys want to visit a little while, um, look at uh, Uncle Sonny's storyboard uh, before we head over to Fatty's for 3 p.m. Right, thank you.